Hi friends, this is Dave of JavaCodeJunkie.com and welcome back to another JavaFX tutorial. In this video, we're going to learn how to use the JavaFX Radio Button class. Radio buttons are a graphical control that allow the user to choose only one of a predefined set of options. Let's create some radio buttons. I've already created a copy of our standard JavaFX project and I'm going to put a copy of the project template on GitHub for anyone who may be interested and I'll put a link in the description below this video. Let's create a set of three radio buttons to represent a user's favorite search engine. First we'll create some private instance variables. We're going to create a label. And then we'll create three radio buttons. Google Bing and DuckDuckGo. We'll organize our imports and then we'll instantiate those variables. Label question equals new label and the question is going to be what is your favorite search engine? Next we'll create instances of our three radio buttons. The first radio button is Google so RDO Google equals new radio button And when creating a new radio button, we again have a choice of constructor. We can either use the default NOARD constructor and then set the text on the radio button with a separate method, or we can provide text for the radio button in the second version of the constructor. And that's what I'll do here. Google. And we'll do the same for Bing and DuckDuckGo. Next, I'm going to create a vertical box that will contain our label and our three radio buttons. And I'm also going to create a horizontal box, which will create a label that I'm going to use as a status bar just to display messages as we go through the rest of this tutorial. Let's create a couple of more private instance variables. One for the vertical box. And one for the horizontal box. and another label for our status bar. Organize our imports again, and let's go down to the program and create some objects for these private instance variables. First, the vertical box. And I'll use the version of the constructor for a vertical box that allows me to specify the spacing for child nodes in the vertical box. So there's going to be 10 pixels vertical space between all of the components that I enter into this vertical box. Next for the horizontal box. Horizontal box equals new horizontal box. And since this is only going to contain a single child node, there's no need to have any spacing specified between child nodes. So I'm just going to use the default no argument constructor. And now the label for the status message.
and I'm just going to put the word ready for the initial status. So now that I have these containers created, I'm going to actually add elements into them. So for the vertical box, I'm going to add the question label and the three radio buttons. Vbox dot get children dot add all. And we'll start with the label. The radio button Google the radio button for Bing, and finally the radio button for DuckDuckGo. I'm also going to add some padding around for a margin between the edge of the vertical box and the controls that it contains. So set padding, new insets, and a padding of 10. Spell insets correctly, organize our imports, and now I'm going to add this vertical box to the left section of our border pane. Root dot set left v box. Now for the horizontal box, horizontal box dot get children dot add. And since there's only one component, I don't need to use the add all method. It's just the add method. And I'll add the status message label. And I'll add the horizontal box to the bottom area of our border pane. We'll run at this point to see how things look and how they line up. Right click, run as Java application. And we have our question, we have our three radio buttons, and we have our status bar. I'd also like to put some padding around the label in the status bar. And I'll use five pixels for the padding around the status label. Run it one more time, and everything looks acceptable for the purposes of this demonstration. You will notice if we now try to select one of these radio button items, for instance, Google, then maybe we change our mind and say Bing, you'll see that we can have more than one of these selected, and that's not the behavior that we want. In order to change this, we have to make these three radio buttons part of a toggle group. So let's go back to our code. Let's create a private instance variable for our toggle group. We'll just call it group. Organize our imports. Instantiate our toggle group. And now for each of the three radio buttons, we'll set the toggle group. So starting with Google, and then Bing, and finally DuckDuckGo. Run it again. And now when we select an item, change our minds and select a different item, we now have the behavior that we expect in a group of radio buttons in that only one can be selected at any one time. So they are three mutually exclusive selections. Now as we can with all nodes in our scene graph, we can add event handlers. So we can add event handlers to each of our three radio buttons. So let's start with the Google toggle button, RDO Google. And I'll use the set on action method to listen for an action event, which is the event that's generated when the user clicks on a radio button. I'll create an anonymous inner class. We'll import correct class. We'll add the unimplemented method, which is our handle method, which is standard for all event handlers. Just do a little 
quick cleanup, and in this handle method, I'm going to print a message in our status bar. Status message dot set, set text, you have selected Google. Let's run. Oh, I select Bing. We haven't added any event handlers to the Bing radio button or the DuckDuckGo radio button. But if I were to select Google, you'll see the status message is now updated with you have selected Google. I'll leave the other two as an exercise for you. The event handler will be essentially the same as the one we've created for Google. One other thing that I wanted to show you was how to add a change listener to the toggle group. We could add individual action listeners to each of our three radio buttons, but that kind of duplicates code three times. A better way to go about listening for changes to our radio buttons is to add a change listener to our toggle group. So let's comment out this set on action that we did on the Google radio button. Source toggle comment. And then we'll go down here and we'll add a change listener to our toggle group. The toggle group has a property called selected toggle property and that contains in our case the radio button within the toggle group that has been selected. So we're going to add a listener to that selected toggle property. So a new change listener. And we'll specify the type as toggle. So if we go back to our selected toggle property, you'll see that it is of type toggle. So we're going to use the same type for our change listener. We're going to add the unimplemented method. Do so again a little cleanup. And in the changed method, we're going to get the selected radio button. selected toggle and that will update the status message you have selected radio button dot get text and I'll run it again and now the message you have selected Google you have selected Bing and you have selected DuckDuck so that's all now done in a single listener instead of having a single listener for each and every radio button. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing so you don't miss any content when I release new videos. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I really appreciate it. And I hope to see you again in the next video. Until then, stay safe and keep on coding.